tell us about that process, you know, the interaction between stories and Socratic dialogues. What, what does that mm -hmm. look like? So usually what happens, you know, we launch with a question mm -hmm. and then we might provide Hold on. a video. You're using the okay. term launch in a particular way. Could you yes. clarify what that means? So launch, if you were to visually look at it, it means to go up and to gain momentum towards something. So our purposeful dialogue, we consider a launch okay. because we want it to gain momentum. We want there to be more that happens. It's not just us kind of coming off the ground a little bit mm -hmm. and it's not linear this way. You know, we want, we want the dialogue to go up okay. until there's this resolution, which is our landing. And so when we launch this, we'll launch with a question. Okay. They will kind of, it depends on the studio. Oftentimes it's, it's directed by them. Sometimes it's directed by a guide. Once that question is launched, there's some dialogue that happens. Usually there's evidence. So it's either a story hmm. or it might be a short video clip of something that would highlight or create that visual in their head. And then we go back to, okay, so imagine you are this person who just so, saw all of your friends go and spray paint at a park on this mm. new park bench. Okay, so after what we just saw, what did you notice? What were some things that you noticed about the video? What are some things you noticed about the person that didn't do it? What did you notice about the people that did do it? Mm. Okay, so now I want you to go figure out, is it right? to follow the crowd or is it right to stand for what you believe in even when nobody else is or even if everybody else turns against you if you stand for them in your belief does that make you right or, is, or are they right because they stand firm in theirs hmm. so you might throw these questions out to them and then they have to go discuss it sometimes they will research it further Sometimes they'll ask to step out of Socratic mode for the next day so mm. they can really dive in and research, come back in the next day, kind of say like, okay, time out <laughs> is mm. done. Like now time in, let's get back to this conversation. I have more to say about it. Mm. And so then now you've got kids developing a, pa a passion about something they feel really strongly about. And they had to put the words behind it. Otherwise, nobody's going to step over to their side. You want to try to win people to come yeah. over and, and look at your viewpoint like, hey, I'm the winning viewpoint here. And so that is the way that we engage in so much conversation. Hmm. That's how we front load a potential situation. Yeah. You know, that's how we can say, do you remember that one time you had this? You know, this is how you felt. I'll use the example this year. Our question was, does power corrupt? Hmm. That phrase was used often among our elementary boys. They're letting power corrupt them. They're letting power corrupt. So we knew we had to have a lot of illustration about how power can corrupt people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so do you remember that one time we had the discussion about this person and how they let power corrupt them? Oh, yeah. Well, what were some of the things they looked at? What were some of the things that they considered? And so it gives them that, again, that visual cue to go back and say, oh, that's right. So maybe if I approach it this way, I'll get a different reaction or mm -hmm. action. Mm -hmm. And so we allow this then to be these guiding moments that we have. And it stands the test of time. It doesn't matter if we did it our first year, our mm -hmm. second year, or our third year. We can refer back to the first year and they will know exactly every time, every time at the beginning of the year, I know that Jack, we're going to have a conversation about feedback about week three. And I'm going to say, remember the first year? And he's going to say, my, how far I've come. You know, he's gonna, <laughs> We can still reflect back on those moments for so many of our learners to get them to, to remember and use those as launching mm -hmm. points for themselves too. And then we always have a landing especially if it's been a significant conversation, one that's involved emotion, one that maybe didn't involve a lot of emotion, emotion that we felt that they didn't connect to. And why? Why didn't they make those connections? Mm. So we always have this landing as well. We don't want to leave everything up in the air. We want them to be able to grasp something, have some type of takeaway. 
even if it's I need to think on it for a couple more days and get back. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They know they always circle back to what they promise they're going to circle back to. Mm -hmm. We rarely have to go around and say, hey, what was, what did you decide on that? Mm -hmm. They've already made the decision and started moving forward. And we're just the last, you know, the last to know. So. Right, right. So, so one of the things that, that Acton is characters, characterized by is this commitment to the Socratic dialogue. So mm -hmm. really opening a question. Now, there may be the, a structure for a launch and a landing, mm -hmm. but, but it doesn't sound like landing is predetermined. No. It's just, you're going to land somewhere and we just like to know where that is. is that yeah. <laughs> and, and for you to share yeah. what you got from this experience with your, with each other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the landing might be on the schedule. The adult probably is not going to have a lot to do with it. Mm. it only to listen, you know, mm. it, it provides insight sometimes and helpful dialogue for us in the future. But really, we're there. We just listen. Mm -hmm. So that landing is purposeful by them to bring to the table what they learned through this very snippet in time, something that they thought might be hard, something they thought they'd never considered before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is there a change in perspective? Is there, do you have more empathy for somebody that you didn't have before? Mm -hmm. Are you going to do something different in the future? So yeah, yeah. getting them able to come together and talk about that, I think is a, is a way to, that gives them the closure, I guess, on mm -hmm. the idea or thought or, or helps them finalize what their thought is. Mm -hmm. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs, so that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host. Don Berg.